Hello everybody, Cedric and CJ here, CRS Wrestling Commentary. We will, be, we will be reviewing WWE's Money in the Bank. So just to jump right in, look, letting you know, this is not going to be what you think. You might just like a lot of stuff that I got to say. It's just, I can't help what they do. I just give it from my perspective. That's, they do what they do, that's on them. Don't get mad at me because I call it out. <laughs> um... So this starts off, Samantha Irvin, I hate how she does ring introductions. I get why she's doing what she's doing, but it is annoying. It's, she's trying to be grandiose when she doesn't have to be. But she gives the rules to the money in the bank. And that is, there are no rules. Winning is all about climbing the ladder and retrieving the briefcase. This promises a title shot at any moment for up to one year. And I had to note, my issue is that I wish it was up to talent to legit try when they feel like it. But I get it. It's a work. Just once, though, I like to see a legit look of surprise when the winner rolls up on the champ at the worst possible moment. <laughs> that would be good. Uh-huh. That'd be good. See that legit look? What the hell are you doing? Cashing in, bruh. Surprise. Like Courtney had to tell Ray Trailer, in a working way, you get in there and whoop him up. So, okay. Men's Money in the Bank. Jey Uso. Andrade. L.A. Knight. Chad Gable. Carmelo Hayes, Drew McIntyre. I know who didn't win. And I wrote, you know, damn. The bell rung 18 minutes, 33 seconds into the event for the first match. That's a whole match length. What was going on before that? Very few advertisement stuff. And then all of their ring entrances. To um, the fullest. Wow, okay. They start off in a Donnybrook only for everyone but Uso and Knight to take a powder so they can tease their fight tease from SmackDown. They stood and looking at each other. Gable stopped Drew from reaching for the case with a vertical arm bar or, as few would recall it from No Mercy, dubbing it Six Seconds of Magic, which was a legit move in MMA fight. So, you know, just that, that was legit. Um, Andrade does a swan dive guillotine drop on Gable, who had the arm bar on. But he just hangs upside down in the ladder. So, look, I get it's all the work. But for me, those who have no chance of winning should not be in this at all. But I hope to be surprised. The fans chant they want tables. It's a oh. damn ladder match, and they want tables. I know I'm, I know I'm alienating would-be viewers and maybe current, but that's just damn stupid. I can't imagine a grown human having sex and pausing because they'd rather look for it online, or worse, wanting to have sex, but they need the keyboard with them because reasons. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. I want keyboard. <laughs> I want keyboard. What? <laughs> I want keyboard. <laughs> the fans chant everything Gable. The, the fans cheer for everything Gable does. And then they caught themselves. You still suck. They started chanting that. You still suck. <sighs> Night hit a nice. Ace, a rear ace crusher on Gable on the ladder. They call that a net breaker, but snake crusher, just a Enzui or behind or rear or back ace crusher, which used to be a finisher, but you know, let's not do that. Knight built an apron to table ladder bridge. This will be used later. Andrade set up a ladder between the ladder and middle rope. Later, when not back, he does a flipping powerbomb to Carmelo onto the ladder with a good high bounce. 
Nice rigging to lessen the impact. So that was good. Gable front suplexes Knight over the top rope onto the ladder that I said would come into use later. Gable, Gable has the case. He's hanging on to it, and Uso yanks the ladder from him. So Gable just falls flat, takes a, then takes a spear from Uso. Uso climbs alone, and he gets the case only for Drew to javelin the ladder into him, like just popped him right in the, the, the chest or face area. Then Drew claims the case. He wins. And I promise CM Punk will ruin any title shot he tries to claim. Hey, what color was that case? Um, this was the, the, the green one with gold on it. Okay. Yeah, it did not match Drew. I was curious. That will come in later, everybody. So, international, I'm sorry, wrong company, intercontinental title match. <laughs> Bronson Reed, Rex Steiner, Breaker. Wait. Oh, Braun Breaker. Or Braun Brecker. Okay. It's got two K's in there. I guess it wanted to be fancy or one letter off from being hooded. I don't know. But it's Braun Breaker versus Sami Zayn. And I was interested in this because I want to see Braun work. I want to see him in a long-winded match. Uh, so, look. Sammy needs to stop that rebound moonsault. It's twice in a row the defender had to step in the way to save his dumb ass. Braun had to look goofy so Sammy wouldn't fall on the crown of his head. I'm like, yeah, Intercontinental title should be the best for him. Because <laughs> that's just... That's just stupid. Someone don't do a move. Someone's got to run in the way. Braun, you can see Braun literally like shuffling side to side. Which way is it gonna go? Which way is it gonna go? Oh, he went that way. Let me jump into, into the direction to catch him. He had to use some strength too. Yep. To hold him. So, let's see. Breaker hits the ropes with amazing speed and self protection from the worst burns. That others would suffer from hitting ropes like that. Uh, Breaker does a standing release throw with great precision. It's overhead suplexes. No issue, no problem. Just do it. Sammy kicks out of kicks out and Breaker hits a hit the push-ups just like his uncle. Mm -hmm. Note, if Sammy wasn't the adult version of Orange Cassidy, I think Breaker would win. So Sammy hit a nice swinging DDT for a two count. I'm glad he tried to win with it, though. A lovely spot. Sammy with the Irish whip on the floor. Braun reverses. Sammy hops onto the barricade. Backflips. Breaker catches him. Tries to javelin him into the corner. Well, the post. Sammy flips out of that. Shoves Breaker into the post. Breaker hits and melts. It was good. That was... I like that. That flowed very well. Breaker on the outside hit a great... I put RS Lariat. But it was a Steiner line. His dad's flying Steiner line. It was nice. Then, uh, Brick hit an epic top rope run, no handed Frankensteiner for a two count. It was effortless, just was. smooth and quick. He got up there and then paused for like a second. But it felt like an eternity, but a good eternity. Because he was just so poised up there. He let everyone see where he was and what he was about to do. And then he snapped it off. Yep. So, outside, Braun hopped him to the apron like Lesnar used to do back in the day. And then did his father's lariat from the apron all the way to Sammy. Knocking him into the announce table. And Braun flew over the announce table. That had that was like a ten foot leap. Yep. That was insane looking. If Braun is six one and you laid him from apron towards that table, you would have a you probably have another two, maybe three feet. But he cleared it. 
and it was just enough. But he seemed like he tweaked his knee on the on the landing though. And then Cole gonna sit there and say the same thing. I was I, I paused, I wrote it, kept watching. Cole said, I was like, you know what? I wrote it first, so you stole from me. You know, you stole it. You stole it. Fucking Cole. Anyway. <laughs> Sammy planned his what? What was the eye with Cole? I don't like Michael Cole. Okay. Sammy planned his boot kick, but Braun countered with an odd combination knee bomb, hip attack, or just throw his ass into him. I don't know. It, it, was, it was weird. Like he went up for this knee strike, but crashed his lower half into him. It was just weird. Sammy uh, counters the spear with a boot kick. And then hits the boot kick in the corner for the win. Boot so, kick. So all in all, Braun did well. And I was impressed. In spite of his size, power, explosiveness, and overall genetics, he made this look believable. I do, I do not look at this like Breaker should have won hands down. Not at all. I don't. It, looked, it was convincing. It looked good. From my standpoint, anyway, it's just don't hype up someone's accolades of being the NXT champion with 13 defenses and hype up how much of a monster they are. They're completely gifted and everything, and then they lose. You don't, you don't, no, just don't. So then. Trish Stratus' plastic self introduces John Cena, who comes out holding a towel saying, the last time is now. He announces his official retirement. He is highly emotional and cites 2025 will be his last WrestleMania. So he's going to do some things there. He's going he's gonna to wrestle. He wants to do things big, do it up well. Trish Stratus got such facial reconstruction when she was smiling, she looked like Jack Nicholson playing the Joker. Oh, yes, she did. Yeah. I couldn't even tell it was. I was like, you say it's Tr Trish Stratus, but she looked like. She looked like one of the common girls, just hard plastic face. She like every other blonde girl out there, just plastic faced. Yeah, terrible. Yeah, I don't have anything to say about it. She, she got work done. <laughs> yep. And we get to the WWE World Title Match. So we got Seth Freakin slash Franklin Rollins versus the champion Damian Priest. And this match, I, I should have skipped, but I felt like I should watch it. So Seth did a nice swan dive set ton atomico and then slowly followed with an Asai moonsault. Okay, cool. Priest uh he hit a headlock driver. You know? He did that. That you know, uh that used to be a legit finisher. And I think it's still like that for for um Matt Taven. You know, he calls it the climax. Oh, okay. That's what you're talking about. Headlock driver. Um, actually, it's a side headlock driver. It'd be more accurate. So, that's a transitional move. Priest hit a stiff lariat. Now, and that's a transitional move. Been for a while. Seth does a post-to-post -post buckle bomb that Priest instantly recovers from and does an elevated sit-out power bomb. Didn't go for the pen. No, I wrote, this is indie as hell. <laughs> Just finisher after finisher. If I was if I was Paul Levesque, I'd be like, what the hell y'all doing? Are y'all trying to mess up my company? You be like, man, you about to get stripped and fired, and you about to just get fired. You should have stayed with your hurt leg up somewhere. <laughs> Priest lands two tornado kicks. As a setup move. Beautiful. Long leg, long reaching tornado kicks. They're just setup moves. 
It used to be the feline. Remember that? Tornado yeah. kick. WCW. The cat. Oh, okay. Yep. Seth hits a curb stomp for a two count. Seth talks trash. You want to be a man? Then stand up on your own two feet. Yeah, I didn't get all that. It's judgment day. He's like, break away from them. Be on your own. Priest hits the crucifix powerbomb. Or the diamond death drop as it originally was. I don't know if he made that move up or not. I don't think he did. But he called it the diamond death drop. Then for his gimmick, the razor's edge. Which is pretty cool. But that was for a two count. Seth hits um, a rope ran avalanche suplex. Floats over for a suplex, but Priest blocks. Tries one of his own. He got blocked. Seth hits the Falcon Arrow for one, two, three. No, it's not a three count. <laughs> yep. The ref simply counted three. That looked closer to four. Mm-hmm. Priest did not move. He now, did not. If the ref had the advantage of the camera angle, Priest's shoulder wouldn't have been down for the one count. But he was down for two and three. Just just saying. Being being fair, I'm being logical. It looks real, real bad. Because it was bad. <laughs> Priest did not move and the ref waves it off as two. The fans were not happy. It was like, no, you can hear him getting restless. The natives are getting restless. <laughs> and and Drew's music hits maybe late. And he's cashing it in. It's a three-way match. We've got something going. Yeah, you're going to have to do something because show sure enough. <laughs> the fans was like, bruh, we're about to not buy any more tickets. But it's Drew McIntyre. We love you now because he's here. So Drew hits the double, double arm DDT and nips up only to catch a lariat. You hit a double arm DDT. You hit a finisher. Go for the pin. That's not a finisher. It's a transition move. Like it was a finish when Mick Foley was doing it. Yeah. But that was back then. So seeing Punk, he shows up and whooped the hell out of Drew. Just whooped him up in the ring. And then with a chair outside the ring. And then we're told no DQs in a three-way. In that case... Why did Drew not use the briefcase he came in with and, with and whooped the hell out of these two that, and just win? That would have made so much sense. Crack. Crack. Yeah, I'm cashing it in. Man. Here, ref. Ref is like, got it. Yep. Knock the ref down a little bit. Get the briefcase. Just wail on him. Beat the dog shit out of him. And be like, got it. One, two, three. Punk gets the world title and hits Drew. Priest hits the choke slam for a three count. And I wrote the only asshole in the match. Is ill-timed moments making the ref turn Seth Rollins into Sonata. Whoa. Sonata pinned a uh, great Muta at I think Muta's 25th anniversary or something mm-hmm. or some show, and the ref one, two, three, no. <laughs> Sonata got up, grabbed him. What you mean no? <laughs> so then, and I had to note. Damian Priest was walking away like a paper champion. Yeah, he when he after he finished pinning dude, he was on his knees looking like God. he was mad. Yeah, he was walking with that look like I do not deserve this. Mm-hmm. Seth, Post match, Seth is angry with CM Punk, and I'm like, all right. CM Punk was like, bruh, I came out here as a heel. Punk came out with fire and whooped his ass. He whooped his ass good. Yes, and that was payback from SmackDown. Mm-hmm, that from bleeding. CM Punk and Drew McIntyre got out of. I love the storyline. I'm enjoying it. It's just I'm not gonna watch Raw to see it. Damn all that. I listen to Cornette about it. Now we get to the women's Money in the Bank match: Naomi versus Zoe Starks versus Lyra Valkyria. Versus Tiffany Stratton versus Chelsea Green versus EO Sky. Note, I don't know these women. I just know if Naomi wins, 
she will fall like Drew McIntyre. My best blind guess going on appearances and what I've seen of any promos, Stratton or Green will win. So, Chelsea is afraid of heights. She tried to climb the ladder, didn't. Got down, started doing her normal stupid stuff. She was doing that NWA, doing something stupid. She had the, the distance match. Remember that? Vaguely. They had the mask on, the social distancing match. I, that, whoo, okay. So Chelsea takes the, she takes to heights like Samoa Joe took to the ultimate X. <laughs> she, I think three people would know what I'm talking about. <laughs> she jumps with the ladder trying to knock the case down, but you know, barely doing that. Chelsea lightly strikes the others with the ladder to keep them from uh, entering the ring, but eventually that fails. Women try to use the ladder, but it's sloppy at best. Lyra does official women DDT on EO Sky, who lands high up on her shoulders, but she sells her lower back. Zoe looked great on natural offense, but half dropped Lyra on the ladder, nearly breaking her arm. With Lyra on the ladder, Zoe tries a slingshot Tope con Hero on Valkyria, but misses her landing on the top of her head on the edge of the ladder. Oh, this is horrible. Yeah. The fans are marking out on weak looking stupid stuff. It's just, they're just falling on ladders and I guess they were happy, but it we, was We terrible. skipped. We skipped. It was terrible. And Stratton wins the belt. Cedra notes that the case is adorned in the same color motif as Stratton. They could have done better than that at least. Yep. In CR Fire Pro, there are matches and events I have intentionally kept Emerald Storm out of just because she matched the ring. That's I've done that. I'm like, no, nah, this looks bad. Let me go ahead and use somebody else. She could be next event or something, but not this one. The replays were of good looking stuff, but I have to question how long it took to set it up. And if it was worth it. Because I'm gonna tell you right now. Only a handful of those people in the arena would remember what they saw at best and less that watched at home would even care to remember. And anyone that recorded it for prosperity will not remember. So next, we get to our main event. The Bloodline, Tamatanga, Jacob Fatu, and Solo Sikoa with Tonga Loa Versus, and I wrote it down before they came out, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, and Cody Rhodes. Because that is the order of importance. Yep. So, I wrote a bunch of notes down. It's almost a blow by blow almost because I didn't have anything else to do. I literally felt like that. Um... We know we noticed this is my note. We noticed that commentary has only talked about Jacob for the whole entrance of the bloodline. Entire. Entire entrance. I mean Sokoa was the one who just, you know, finally wiped out the wise man that's been claiming the tribal chief. But from the time they hit the stage, it was Jacob Fatu almost until they started to go up the steps and then they started talking about Sokoa. Yep. I was like, okay, we'll see how this go. And I'm gonna read my notes. I might, you can jump in when you need to. I'll say something whenever I feel the need. But Cody gets in and tie and beats on Tama. Randy gets in and beats on Tama. Tama throws Randy in the eye and tags Jacob. Yep. Wait, wait. Let me start over, because Tama ties up with Cody, who gets. Uh, and, and, and Tommy gets beat on by Cody. Then Kevin gets in and beats him down. Then Cody. Then Randy. Tommy thumbs Randy in the eye and tags Jacob. Randy hits Green Killer on Jacob, who eats it like he should, and hits the Samoan drop. Jacob tags in Solo, who does things to Randy, just does some things. The heels are in charge for now. Randy backdrops Tama and makes the hot tag. 
Kevin beats down Tama. Kevin hits the swanton and goes for the pin that's broken up by Jacob. Jacob beats on Kevin. Solo keeps Kevin from tagging, and now Kevin takes the long beating. Solo did a corner hip attack. That was all right. But then he tags in Jacob, who does it so much better, and it looked epic. It, it, it looked unstoppable. Tama beats on Kevin like a wild man after being treated like a bag of, of discarded kittens. <laughs> That's how Tama was treated. Yeah. They triple team Kevin in the corner who tries to break for freedom, but they stop him. Mm-hmm. Kevin tried to get the hell up out of it. He's like, no, nah, I got the lead. I got to get the hell out of here. Cedra popped laughing on that one. <laughs> I mean, because he, he tried to get the hell out of there. Like, no, nah, let's stay here and take this whooping. Cole mentions Gorillas of Destiny. Maybe they'll be able to use that name. Jacob comes in and beats up on Kevin. Jacob misses a stinger splash and hits the post, allowing Kevin to tag in Cody, who beats on Sokoa. Cody hits the Ace Crusher on Tama, knocks off Jacob. Suicida Sokoa, Suicida's lower. Cody's on fire. Jacob beats on Cody to slow him a bit before being back body dropped over the railing. So Jacob's out for now. Sokoa hit a spear in the in the ring for a two count on Cody. Solo misses. Um, yeah, Solo missed uh, Cody and hit the ref, and it looked. Super plan. Just ran past him with the elbow. Kept the arm up like, oh, I'm going to get you. I'm gonna, <laughs> like some old man. I'm going to get you yet, young man. And just, <laughs> and, you know, just, just, just did. It looked terrible. <laughs> it's like you miss somebody. They drop the arm, not keep it up, and then run at an angle. At the, <laughs> what in the hell? <laughs> like heat seeking rocks. <laughs> Cody hit the ace crush on Sokoa. And Owens hit the frog splash on uh, and, on, on Sokoa. And then Randy hit the Ace Crusher as well. So they got their stuff in. Cody clears the table and drops the top edge that bounces the edge of the table. That little plastic flimsy part. Dropped on the floor. And it bounced and hit Tonga Loa in the shoulder head area. <laughs> he didn't sell it though. No, he was still trying to crawl. <laughs> Jacob beats down everyone. And squat. And you know what? I, I like the fact in this whole match. Tungaloa didn't even do anything to anybody. Mm-mm. They went out and no, whooped his got, ass. He got Randy. Oh, no, I didn't see that. Are you saying you really didn't see what? it? No, I didn't see that. Okay. Yeah, so, Jacob beats down everyone <laughs> and squashed the ref on the post, but it looked overly planned. Jacob ran, missed somebody. I forgot who it was, but then kept running to hit the ref. I was like, I can't stop myself. I have to hit you now. And that is the one thing that I'm like, these are the professionals doing it. Nick Camarado was doing it. I was like, this dude don't know what to do. And I'm like, well, no one knows what to do. <laughs> don't do shit you don't know how to do. So Owens frog splashed Jacob from the railing to the table. Okay. Then Owens tries to power drive Tama and Loa has to do a nut shot. But Owens didn't sell the first one, so Loa had to do it again. Yep. And Loa kneeled down like, what the hell? He shook his head like, what the hell? <laughs> Randy crushes everyone, but is stopped by... I mean, Randy was just hitting the age crush on everybody, but yeah. he stopped by Sokoa's uh, Samoan... Sokoa's Samoan spike. Cody does two crossroads on, on him, but then Jacob did a rope run... Uh, rolling senton on Cody to break that up. And then he hit the Impaler DDT, Elevated DDT, Lifting Spike DDT, whatever the hell you want to call that DDT. But he hit it on Cody. <laughs> Solo hit the Samoan Spike with aid from, from Jacob and got the one, two, three count on Cody. So Solo won. And after the match, Solo stands triumphant and Jacob adorns the tribal lay on him. In scene. But I was writing this as it was going, and I was like, why is Tama Tonga the whooping post? Yes. Y- I, yes, that is what I was what? wondering. All they well. did was humiliate Tama Tonga. I'm like, man, Tama Tonga, you, if you ever hear this look back at that match, you'd be like, no, I deserve more respect than that. They 
If this was an old school Ring of Honor match, that match would have been five stars. Because they would have pulled that off well. It the Samoa, literally, Tamatanga, Jacob Fatu would look dominant. Mm -hmm. Randy would have equaled that out. Cody would have been a subtle balance. Kevin Owens would have been that. Kevin Owens would have been that dude that gets beat down, but hit the epic stuff. That's what he would. He'd get beat down, right? But he would equal it out with epic stuff. Mm -hmm. He'd be, he'd be, get those cheap shots in. Solo Sokoa, yeah, he's the leader, but he's the one that would get thrown out the ring because, yeah, you. You ain't earned it yet. So, that's how that would have been. So, and they would have hit the... They would have hit finishes back to back to back. That would have showed that's getting to the end of the match. Samoa and Spike for the win. It would have a little help from, you know, I don't know, somebody outside the ring. And then they would have, and then they would have won. That's how that would have went. But it didn't. So we got what we got. The war ain't over. The heels won. The war ends when the baby faces win. All this was was a half ass. Not so well come up it for the baby faces after all their victories for the past month. Maybe month and a half. So it's not working. It's not working. Because if they're gonna do this and win, and then all of a sudden they're gonna start the baby faces are gonna start humiliating the, the heels again. I'd be like, what is the point? Yeah. In any case, I'm tired. I'm sleepy. I need to go to bed. It's 12.26 a.m. It's Wednesday morning. It's July 9th. It's Tuesday morning. What did I say, Wednesday? Yeah. I got I got excited for a second. Shoes of a champion. Did I say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did I say shoes of a champion? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right it's tuesday morning it's m bison's murder day yeah. if anyone ever saw that street fighter watch it once and don't go back the original street fighter from what what was it, the 90s yeah yeah john claude yeah. van damme raul julia yeah just watch it once and no more uh so that's going to do it for us. This has been Cedric and Cedric for CRS and Commentary on WWE's Money in the Bank. I want you all to be cool, be, chill, be cool, be chill, be safe. And we will see you all next time. Yeah.